Hello everybody, you welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. The breakup or exit of band members are just as ubiquitous and common as the actual formation of the groups themselves, and the circumstances are almost always identical. A group of gifted musicians pull their respective talents into a musical unit with almost nothing but a dream to make it big one day, and eventually they do. But over time, divisive factors cause these groups to fall apart. Reggae music isn't exempted from this phenomenon. Except for the mighty diamonds, who could only be separated by death, it's almost impossible to find a group that hasn't seen a breakup or lineup change. Whether the Wailers, Inner Circle, or one of the greatest groups, and the subject of today's video in the legendary Black Uhuru. Black Uhuru in particular have featured up to five different lineup changes since its formation in 1972, but the most iconic and successful was the third incarnation, which I like to refer to as Black Uhuru 3.0, which was comprised of Derek Ducky Simpson, Sandra Puma Jones, and Michael Rose, in collaboration with Sly Dunbar and Robbie Shakespeare. Between 1978 and 1984, this ensemble put together some of the greatest music ever recorded, with five albums and roughly 40 songs that are all absolute classics. They sealed their place as the second most successful band after Bob Marley and the Wailers, and made history by winning the first reggae Grammy in 1985. But at the absolute zenith of their exploits, the group was struck a mortal blow when its powerful and dynamic lead singer, Michael Rose, left the group and sparked a chain of events that would bring Black Uhuru's awesome six-year run to an abrupt end. The exact reason why Rose left the group was unclear for almost four decades, but in recent times, Ducky Simpson has broken his silence on what actually happened in 1984. Let's take a look at the story behind Michael Rose's dramatic exit from Black Uhuru. To really get to the roots, we need to go back to 1976, when Ducky Simpson was looking to rebuild Black Uhuru after the exit of Don Carlos and Garth Dennis. Ducky had recruited vocalist Errol Nelson and was introduced to a 19-year-old singer called Michael Rose by legendary producer King Jammy. The trio fell down to two when Errol Nelson left the group after recording the group's first album and Ducky would replace him with US-born singer and dancer Puma Jones in 1978. After recording a series of devastating singles produced by Sly and Robbie, they released their first album, Showcase, in 1979, which featured songs like Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, Shy Night Girl, and Plastic Smile, which were all written by Michael Rose. That album was a stunning success that was followed by four marvelous records, which would go on to define the tempo and direction of reggae music in the 1980s. The first of these was Sensimila, under their new label, Island Records, and that album would launch them internationally upon release in 1980. It was a smash hit and cultural landmark, but would be outdone by their next album titled Red, which came out in 1981. Red is considered to be the group's greatest album, and indeed among the greatest of the 20th century across all genres. It was followed by 1982's Chill Out and 1983's Anthem, which were all great and super successful commercially. But while the group was selling millions and millions of records and performing at sold-out shows all over the planet, there were huge undercurrents of egos and infighting brewing between the members. According to Ducky, the strain of the group's non-stop touring and interpersonal dynamics had taken its toll with several of them not speaking to each other for long periods of time. But the most glaring thing he noticed was Michael Rose's rapidly growing ego. Rose just wasn't the group's lead singer but was also the one who had written most of their songs. And according to Ducky, he seemed to be getting to his head. The acrimony was so intense that Chris Blackwell told Ducky during a private chat that he believed that what would drive the group over the edge would be for one of them to get married. Blackwell's prediction would turn out to be spot on in the very near future. After the group finished recording Anthem in 1983, they embarked on a staggering world tour that saw them performing in Asia, the US and Europe in 1984. The tensions between the members were at an all-time high, and amidst their hectic schedule on the road, Michael Rose began a relationship with a young lady and got married to this lady during the tour. It was unusual in the first place, but what made it most bizarre was that neither Ducky or Puma knew about his wedding until later. Ducky walked into Michael Rose's room by accident and found out that the wedding reception was in full swing. It would mark a new low in an already shaky relationship. It was said that Michael Rose had many people around him friends and family telling him that he was Black Uhuru and that he didn't need Ducky to be a superstar. Aside from inflating his ego, their words had no effect. But when his new wife also started saying the same thing, he truly started considering his exit from the group. His wife was said to be very outspoken 
and started weighing in on official Black Uhuru matters herself, acting just like his official representative, much to his bandmate's annoyance, especially Ducky, and it would lead to several heated arguments during the tour. Michael's wife's influence on him was simply huge, and during the tour, it often drew comparisons with the same dynamics that British rock band The Beatles faced when John Lennon's wife, Yoko Ono, became an unofficial fifth member of the Fab Four and began to exert immense influence on the group, which eventually led to their dissolution. But despite the chaos behind the scenes, the tour was still moving majestically. Black Uhuru has just run through a now legendary series of shows in Japan and were rounding up the US leg of their tour in California alongside Nigerian musician Sonny Ade. The tour would end with a serious altercation between Ducky on one hand and Michael and his missus on the other, leading to the couple getting kicked out of the hotel by management. By that time, Michael Rose was telling anybody who cared to listen that he was going to quit the group and eventually he began to air that same opinion to Ducky. By the time the tour was over, the group's obligations to their labor were fulfilled and it was now time to negotiate a new recording contract. Their first contract had been a disaster which saw them getting little or no royalties from Island Records over the previous six years. So the band decided to hold a meeting to decide the way forward. Ducky, Puma and Sly and Robbie arrived at the meeting which was to take place at the poolside of the Sheraton Hotel in Kingston and Michael Rose also showed up with his wife in tow. During the meeting, Rose shocked his bandmates when he told Ducky that going forward that any communications to him regarding Black Uhuru had to be passed through his wife. That statement sparked a heated argument and particularly provoked Robbie Shakespeare who in the heat of the argument is said to have tossed their table into the swimming pool before storming out of the hotel with Sly. That incident was the height of all the infighting and truly marked the end of that lineup with Michael Rose choosing to go solo that day. A decision that saddened the remaining members of the group, especially Puma. They weren't only out of a contract but had lost their lead singer and colleague of the past six years. From that point, Michael Rose kept his distance from Ducky but remained fairly cordial with Puma as well as Sly and Robbie, giving them a little hope that there could be a reconciliation. By the next year, in 1985, it had been two years since the release of Anthem, their last album for Island Records, and the upcoming Grammy Awards had just created an award category for Best Reggae Recording. Chris Blackwell informed Ducky that their Black Uhuru had been nominated for Anthem along heavy hitters like Peter Tosh, Jimmy Cliff, Steel Pulse, and Yellow Man. Blackwell gave Ducky envelopes with cash and plane tickets to give to his bandmates, including Michael Rose, to enable them attend the ceremony in the US. But when Ducky told Michael Rose, the latter refused, insisting that he was done with Black Uhuru. Ducky, Puma, along with Busly and Robbie, all attended the ceremony. Now it was a sure thing that he was gone for good, Ducky replaced him with Junior Reed, who was also from Waterhouse like Rose and also had a similar singing style and he would join the group in time to release their next album, Brutal, which came out in 1986 under Ras Records. A good effort of course, but nowhere near the level of previous works. Michael Rose withdrew from the limelight after parting ways with Black Uhuru. Despite being a city guy, he retired to the Blue Mountains of Jamaica to start a coffee farm before making a comeback in 1989 after signing with American label RCA Records and released the album Proud. It's been almost 40 years since that infamous split in 1984 and despite both Rose and Black Uhuru putting out music over the years, everything they've done is nowhere near the quality and success of what they did during their heydays together. Even though there was a brief reunion for a tour in 2004, that carried on under the name of Black Uhuru featuring Michael Rose, an unfortunate end to one of the greatest success stories in reggae history and a cautionary tale about the dangers of egos and other pitfalls which are part and parcel of the modern music industry. But we are comforted by the magnificent songs that they produced in those wonderful days. Music that transports us to a period, albeit a brief one, when one of the greatest groups of all time were creating immortal classic sound, the likes of which can never be replicated. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe and until next time. Jobless.